Hello, Pastor Doug, back again with another video. Last week, I did one of my little reaction videos where I take online quizzes to challenge myself and just to see how I'd answer questions from different perspectives. So I did a reaction to how much of an atheist are you quiz. So I answered the questions quickly, had some fun, and at least by my channel standards, it went viral, i.e. I had 400 views. So this was fun. I had several people, though, respond, several atheists who were challenging me, asking questions. And, you know, that's wonderful. That's fun. But there was this one gentleman who listed these nine questions, and I want to go through and answer them. Now, as always, I'm going to actually do this cold. I only read the first few questions, and I said, this is going to be a really long response to type it out. However, if I did it as a video, I think it might be interesting. So I'm going to go through and answer these questions by an atheist. And so this person wrote, I will answer your questions if you answer mine, since you seem so fond of asking them. I wonder if you will answer them. So, yes, here we go. So let's go through it. Number one, are morals objective? Absolutely 100%. Why? Because they're based on God's law. In an atheist world, of course, morals cannot be objective. They're subjective because there's really no such thing as good and evil. There's no such thing as any absolute or universal, which is one of the main reasons I reject atheism as a religion and believe in Christianity. But are morals objective? Yes. Number two, are there objective moral duties? Sure, of, of course. I mean, if you are called to do things that are moral, you know, we are called to love our neighbor. Yes, there are objective moral duties. There are things we're supposed to do. So that was an easy question. Number three, is it immoral not to do an objective moral duty? Yes, if God commands us to be in worship and we do not remember the Sabbath day, that's immoral. So to reject a commandment of God is immoral. All right, so far, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Number four, does God do the objective moral duties? The technical, an well, the technical answer here is actually no. And let me explain, because this is a common mistake atheists make. There is no moral law above God, because that means God wouldn't be God. And God cannot arbitrarily change a moral law that he has given, because he is unchangeable, and he is by definition moral. Now, why is he moral? Because morality exists as a mere reflection of God's character. So, for instance, does God steal? No. But why is stealing wrong? because God's not a thief. So is God loving? Yes. But why is God loving? Because there's some command that he has to love his neighbor above him? No. He loves his neighbor because he is God, and God is loving, and loving is a reflection of his very nature. So if you wanted to find it in a broad sense, does God objectively do moral duties? Yes, but not because he's compelled to, but because it, those moral duties are his very nature. That's a very important thing to understand. So number four, sorry, number five. You see a child drowning in a shallow pool, and notice a person just watching that, just watching, that is able to si save the child with no risk to themselves, but is not. Is that person a not? Is that person's a non-action immoral? Yes. If a human being came across and saw a child drowning, should he go and save that child? 100% yes. How do I know this? The second commandment of the two great commandments, you shall go love your neighbor. So absolutely, that would be an immoral act. And I hope you see where this is going to be going. See, well, God doesn't save children, and so therefore God is immoral. Oh my, that's just such silly ways of thinking. Notice what the mistake the atheist is making. They're making two fundamental mistakes. First of all, they're assuming the child is innocent. The child is not innocent. So God does not have to, quote, save immoral children. Second of all, God is not man. Atheists and a lot of modern Christians want to try to make God like man. That is not the case. 
God is creator, God is sovereign, God is judge, and man is not. But let's read on. Number six. If you go to save the child and that man tells you to stop as he was told it was for the greater good, but he doesn't know what that is, do you continue to save the child? Yeah, because you're dealing with a crazy guy. <laughs> you know, I'm going to go and grab and save the child. Of course. I mean, I can't even think of a reason why the child, you know, I don't know, is the child radioactive and therefore don't save the child? No, I'm going to still go save the child. Why? Because I'm going to obey the commandments of God. Now, the atheist has no reason to save the child. And that's why the vast majority of atheists, by the way, are pro-abortion. They are all for slaughtering children in the millions. For the Christian, you go save the child because we have an objective law to do so. Number seven, is an act of justice to punish it punish innocent children for the crimes of others. Oh, I see where this is going. Um, in No, that'd be a violation of God's law. As we read in the Old Covenant, you know, we, we are forbidden to punish a child merely because of what the Father has done. But again, we're talking human categories here. So, yeah, again, easy question. Number eight. If you are able to stop it, and knew a person was about to grape, I assume assault a child, would you stop it? Sure, 100%. Again, uh, I have actually reasons to do that, universal standards, unlike the atheist. Number nine, would you consider a parent who put their kids in a room with a poison fruit and told the kids not to eat it, but then also put the best con artist in the room with a child, knowing the con artist will get the kids to eat the fruit, and the parent does nothing to stop it a good parent. No, that'd be a terrible par a parent. Again, as a Christian, I have God's law. I can clearly see that it's wrong. I can say that it's wrong. And, of course, the atheist, by the way, has no problem with that intellectually. Now, many atheists, of course, would stop the child being drowned, would stop the rapist, would stop this silly situation in number nine, why? Because the atheist is made in the image of God. And when the atheist does something good, they're actually rebelling against their religion and proving that God exists because they're made in the image of God. I love saying to an atheist, the proof that God exists is you. You have to steal the Christian worldview to function, to think. And yet you're rebelling against it, which shows you the problem with atheism is by definition irrational. Now, of course, you notice what he's trying to set up here. He's trying to set up all these things about God. But you notice the problem. Again, the atheist assumes the human being is not sinful. The atheist is assuming that the final authority is with the individual. And of course, this is why atheists are idolatrous, because they worship themselves. It is a crazy mentality. For the Christian we understand where morality comes from. And so therefore, when a child dies, yes, that's a horrible thing. Why? Because we live in a fallen and sinful and horrible world. None of us deserves heaven. We all deserve hell. But God in his mercy has sent us Christ, and he dies for our sins and takes our place. So it's interesting, on number nine, God is willing to sacrifice his son to redeem his people. And you notice, of course, again with number nine, the complete randomness of this. It's just some parent doing some stupid thing, as opposed to God ordaining things for his good and his glory to redeem his people. Well, these are good questions, and I hope this helps. As always, Christ's grace and peace to you all. Amen.